Nick Clark. This is the Firm's Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Firm Podcast. We got an exciting show lined up for you today. Uh, just one of those topics you guys have been asking for and been talking about. And so uh, we got Nick, I'm Charles, and then we got our phenomenal guest today. First off, our first lady on the show, right? Dr. Karen McDonald Hill is in the building. So we're talking about um, community organizer, Arthur, just mother, parent, expertise in all these areas. And so listen, we're going to get right into the topic tonight. Karen, pleasure to have you. How Absolutely are you? Absolutely, pleasure to be here. Great, 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 great. Absolutely. All right, well, hey, let's get into it, man. So with the topic we have today, let's start by looking at this. What comes to mind when you think of co-parenting? Karen, we're going to start with you. Yeah, so co-parenting, when I think about co-parenting, I think about shared. That's the, that's the word that comes to mind for me is shared. Shared parenting, shared roles, shared, shared responsibilities. So shared is the word that comes to mind for me. Shared, that's a big one. Big one. What about you, bro? Uh, I, my <clears throat> definition of co-parenting comes from, I guess, my experience and so where I exist with it, right? So in terms of meeting my wife and already having a, her already having a daughter. And so I think of it from the standpoint of um, a blend. Like, how do I come in and be parental support, be that parental figure in the space? And her father is in her life. How do I come mm-hmm. in and find the right balance of being present and being active when my uh, soon-to-be bonus daughter has a father? So I think of it as a perfect blend, if you will, just mm-hmm. a mix of making it all work. Yeah, I'm glad you say that, too, because I actually share that experience as well. So I have okay. co-parenting with my daughter's father, okay. you know, divorced, and then also with my bonus child okay. Um, okay, because his mother is very active in his life as well. So I, okay. I definitely share that experience. See, with me, I think, I think of compromise. That's like one of the first things you come to my head, like yeah. compromise. Yeah. Compromise, yeah. then partnership. Because I think when you talk about co-parent, it's kind of like, this is like, a, I'm not going to say a marriage, but it's like until death do you part. Because as long as the child is alive, you have to deal with this person. As they get older, I mean, you kind of, you don't have as much contact, but you still have some contact yeah. because you guys have a, ch- a child you guys share. Yeah. So I think I would say, like I say, compromising and partnership. So those would be my, those would be my things that I think of. Because I think you have to learn how to share and, and be willing to give, too. I think it's like give and take. That's, that's a really interesting point. So, um... They've had an opportunity, Kara, to hear Nick's story in the first couple of episodes. They've got an opportunity to kind of hear my backstory, and I've been able to loop that in. Just, just tell us how you became, I guess, an initial co-parenting. Yeah. How you ended up in a co-parenting space. So my daughter is 10. Okay. So it's really been 10 years of co-parenting because even though her father and I, um, we were married at the time when she was born, mm-hmm. that's when things were really starting to, to break down. So she doesn't know mom and dad in the same household. Mm, okay. Um, okay. Co-parenting has been a serious journey, and I didn't think I would be in this place right now. Now I won't say I didn't think. I knew I would eventually get here. I just wasn't sure how long it was going to take. Okay. Because okay. I knew, you know, thinking about all that we went through throughout the divorce process and throughout the first years of her life, um, it was hard for me to even imagine us compromising and having the type of partnership that we have now that I feel completely blessed. I mean, I talk about it and I think about it all the time, just how blessed I am, she is, and he is, that we have gotten to this place of maturity and wisdom. But it was a journey. It took, it took a lot of uh, work on both of our parts to, to really look at it and, and put it in the place where it is right now. I don't know how deep you want me to get <laughs> in, into I'm- it. But, because, um, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's a flowing conversation in terms of, of what's required. But I'm, I'm glad to hear you say um, you weren't 100% sure of how you would get to this place. This place being, we got it, we got it worked out to a place yeah. of smooth and, 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 and flowing working relationship. We work together. We work together because, you know, when you have all that pain that hurts, sometimes it's hard to put that to the side. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though you may think you are putting it to the side, you may make certain decisions where you're like, oh, wait a minute, maybe that was made out of hurt. Um, and then for me, um, what was really interesting was that I, I got, to, I would get to a place where we would be in a, a smooth and ish position, you know, yeah. we would, Ooh. you know, have parent teacher conference or, you know, recite, dance recital, whatever it is. And, you know, we'd be side by side. We may even crack a joke together. 
And then two days later, something would happen that would make me want to just wring his neck. And I'm thinking it was that up, up and down where I was like, wait a minute, we were laughing two days ago. Yeah. And now yeah. how dare you? You know, so, so it, it, it was very difficult, but I looked at it. For one, I had to be very, very um, reflective and introspective and say, okay, number one, is he really doing that to hurt you? Because, because some of those things, maybe he isn't looking at it that way. Mm. Um, and I also had to try to look at things from his perspective. So it took a lot for me to get to that place. I was like, I feel like we're in this, this cycle, the cycle, the cycle. Mm. But I had to start to look at it from his viewpoint. And that really helped me to calm things down. And then I also said, people, you allow people to upset you. Are you really going to allow yeah, yeah. this person to keep upsetting you? And yeah. the answer was no. Because it didn't feel good at all. I'm talking about if I would even get the name pull up on my phone, my heart would be fast. I mean, I, I, just this visceral reaction. I couldn't. Call, it was that bad. Like the call ID on the phone. Just phone the call name you. pop up. Mm. I, the email pop up. Yeah. Don't let you ring the doorbell. I mean, like all of that would just make me. I, I mean, I'm thinking about it now. No, <laughs> you don't get it. Like, it was, was it me. was bad. It was yeah. bad. But now, when I tell you, it's this genuine. Have a nice day. Have a nice week. How, what are we going to do about this? And especially during COVID, the level of co-parenting is even stronger right. now because we're having to make some very important decisions that we never even thought we would have to. And I love the way we're going about it. I love it. That speaks, that speaks volumes. I know one thing you went back to you spoke about was, I guess, being the pain or just dealing with your personal mm -hmm. issues about affecting the co-parenting. Do you think that happens a lot? And I'm just going to say for men, we feel like for us, it happens a lot. Like we take, I guess we take the short end of the co-parenting stick because of depending upon how the mom is feeling at the time. Like maybe she's in a good mood, we'll, we'll be in a good co-parenting state. If she's in a bad mood, we suffer. So do you think, how, why do you think that plays such a role? Well, I, I think it's just having difficulty separating, you know, it, it can be. And like I said, for, for me, it was the repeated hurt. But um, when, you, when it comes to the pain, I heard a, a quote, and I may or may not be saying it correctly, but it was saying, do not put the child or the children in the middle of your disagreements, but put them in the center of your decisions. Mm -hmm. And so okay. thinking about what is best for this child or these children and really taking yourself out of it, because sometimes it may not be what's what I you I think is best for me. So I'll I'll go back to the visitation piece. When I tell you that was the hardest thing for me because what I knew when I thought of um, fathers in a co-parenting situation, just from what I'd seen, it was right. the every other weekend thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so. And that's crazy that you said because precedence was based on what she's seen. It's, it's it, just it, that's every that's what week. it was. That, and so so for me, I, I automatically assumed that that's what we were going to come, come to. It was like, this is not going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. And when he presented what he wanted, when I tell you that I cried, so I cried more over that than anything else during that whole time period. Every time we would mention, because I looked at it as exactly. I am her mother. I, I didn't even put the, the hurt piece of what did you do and... Uh, I put, I'm the mother. Mm. I gave birth to this child. So I know what's best. Okay, nobody can, can, can do for her what I can do, and especially having a daughter. I mean, I, it was so hard, and it took us, I want to say maybe a year and a half to even come to a degree, an, an agreement wow. because it was that difficult. I mean, it was painful. What did he ask for? If you don't mind me asking, what was well, I, I, you know, I, I really can't remember what the initial request was. I know it was overwhelming for me. So I don't know if it was even 50, it, it, whatever it was, it was, there's no way anything over that Friday, Saturday was going to be too much for me. But see, but see, right? like, but see they're talking like why we talked about offline. You talking about maybe four days a month. And that's no time for a father to even feel like he's bested because lo and behold, as a child, if you see me four times a month, do you really know me? And it's like you're going to a stranger's house every time. And for fathers, that's not fair. And I think a lot of times, even if you, I'm glad you said it, I don't think moms look at that. Like dads want our time too to bond with our babies too. And we deserve, and we deserve that time because we're important too. And I think sometimes our role gets kicked back like, well, it really don't matter. As long as mom is good, everybody else will be fine. And dad, you just have to take whatever's left over. 
We're going to eat. Hey, you just get the scraps. No, that's not fair to us because we want our time too. But I'm glad you did say that because a lot of moms, they battle with that. They feel like, hey, I'm the best decision maker. I do this better than you. I cook better than you. I do all these things better than you. But but it's the how that co-parent. It's like, I want to dictate what you get to my liking, to my standard. Hey, you can get this. And if I want to give you some more days because my girlfriends want to go out, then you can get some extra days. <laughs> you go some extra days. Now. Somebody appreciate it. That's why I speak from experience. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, no, I'm telling it, it was tough. It was tough. And, and so, you know, when we came to the decision, we actually sat down and it was, okay, we, what we, the agreement that we came up with was that no parent was going to be away from her for a certain number of days. We looked at it like that. Yeah. Okay. I also That's looked cool. at the fact that his family was extremely involved. He has a mother. And she has a grandmother who absolutely loves her, nurtures her, cares for her in a way that is beautiful to watch. And I looked at that. I That's looked cool. at his siblings. I looked at all of those things. And I said, she's gaining certain things yeah. when she's over there that makes her into this extremely happy child that she is right now. Right. But it, I, it was extremely difficult. And I wasn't sure that I made the right decision initially. But... You know, I, you know, just first it was, you know, sitting on the corner of her bed crying, like, my, my baby's not with me. Or, you know, it was like, it was, it was very difficult. And I had to start to look at different things. Um, okay, so initially it was, okay, well, you know, I guess I have time to go out, <laughs> you know. Yeah. All right, well, you know, I have time to travel. I have, you know, I was looking at things, trying to fill my life with those things. And then I started saying, no, I have time to pursue some goals. So right. I said, I'm going to train. I ran a full mm -hmm. marathon. 26.2 miles. Um, 26 miles. Okay, don't forget the point two. That's important. Thank you. Point two. And yeah. cried like a baby crossing that finish line. It was the best feeling ever. Wow. Um, I said, I'm going back to school. Earned a PhD. I'm going to change careers. You know, all of these things that I was able to do that make me a better person, mm -hmm. that in turn made me a better mother. But then, it was hard. <laughs> just, just on the front end, it was like, nah, it I don't hard. see. It was hard. Dang. See, that's... That's, that's, that's rough, man. See, my mom always preaches, like, to, especially that young mother, she was like, so you want to keep that baby all the time? You want to punish yourself like that and keep that baby all the time? That's my mom's dad's like, so you don't want you no time. So you, you want to punish yourself and keep a baby away from a man that bad. Yeah. And she was like, yeah. she was like, that's crazy to me. Because like, you talk about like, hey, now I got free time to just relax. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Get to know you instead of being mom so much. Like sometimes I think people get in that mode with like, your mom 24 seven. <laughs> so you don't want to co-parent. You're like, my mom, my mom, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm juggling this hat. And then when dad comes in, it's like, hey, that's a weekend for you to chill. You don't know what to do because your life has become yes. so that child. <laughs> you know what it I'm saying? It was 100% that way. And I have to tell, I mean, here it is, even all these years later, it's still extremely difficult for me to say goodbye. Right? So the whole drop off thing, it, to this day, I mean, I have to collect myself. I mean, on the way there to drop her off, I'm already starting to miss her. You know, so, so I, it doesn't, I, I'm not saying it gets easier, but I try to, you know, make sure we talk throughout the, 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 the times that she's with him. And I make sure, you know, when, when she's coming back, I'm all excited. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I try to look at it from all these different perspectives to, to be calm about it. But it, it, it's, it's not the easiest thing. And how much time is it between when she leaves you and comes back? How much time is it? Yeah, so talk about co-parenting. Talk about compromise. Talk about, you know, shared. Talk, we, we've had those discussions during COVID, and we decided on a different schedule because okay. of COVID. Okay. So prior to that, we were doing drop-off and, and pick-up. We, we had alternate days throughout the week. Okay. So, you know, you may have two days here. I may have one there. You know, we would just we would switch up so that we, you know, okay. had that. Um, then we decided, you know, because the transition is now not taking place at school, mm. that's it's the back and forth will seem different and may seem too much for her. Okay. So okay. I actually allowed more days so that drop off is only it's every <sighs> the way we have it now is um, it's pretty much like a, a 60 40 thing, which I never thought I would get Man. to. So you went from not even want to leave you to like. But because of COVID. Right. Right? And because I knew this is what, I, you know, I could tell the struggle of the, you know, you're, try, you're trying to homeschool and then in the middle of the, the week, or you just got off work and now on a, a Tuesday, we got to drop her off. here. It, it was just too much. And the distance now, we, we don't live around the corner from each other. Okay. So I factored all of those things in, but I said to him, I said, let's try it. Okay. I said, and, and I want us to revisit this. And if I'm not comfortable with it, because I said, this is a big deal. 
And I also said, I just need to also make sure that I'm able to speak to her mm. throughout the week. So I mean, those are, they're the parameters. Um, and I'm sure if I say, let's go back to you know, the regular, then, then that'll be fine. Um, but yes, I can't believe that that's, but, but guess well, what else too? Good. Good. If I call him now, tomorrow and say, I just want to see her. Like I did that last week. I called him and I said, I want to see her. Mm. And we went to the bookstore. We had cupcakes, ice cream, took her back. I had a couple hours just because I missed her. And I had I'd have only been away from her for two days, but I was like, I miss my child. And, and right. he said, okay, because we have that type of relationship now. And I think the most important thing you said was even in the, okay, this is the COVID schedule. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do the back and forth because this was best for, for her. her. You keep saying you like the decision. We want to emphasize the decision making is not like okay, no, nah, I don't want to drive up and down the road. No, we don't. Yeah. I want to split visitation. It's what would be most conducive to Listen, her. I and cried her like a baby. I cried again once mm. I, when I talked to him about you know let's let's switch the schedule up. I was like, wait a minute, this means that how many days am I going to be away from her? I mean, I was yeah. boo who didn't let her see it. Right. You know, like oh, you going to your dad's? You know, whatever. But, but yes, it was absolutely what I thought and what I still think is best for her because that back and forth during this time, yeah. it's not good. Let's see, I'm gonna tell you something key you just hit. This is a big point you just hit on. You, you celebrated her father going there. So you made it seem like, hey, that's a good thing. Because even sometimes you have parents to where they've said their dad, hey, I'm gonna say that dad gives those four days. So the child goes over, I know you don't wanna go to your dad's house, but you gotta go this weekend. That's already creating a bad vibe. You know what I'm saying? That's already created a bad vibe. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that you celebrate him the way it's like, you going to kick it with your dad? Like you, 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 I guess you uplift dad. So she's kind of excited about going because she sees too, like, hey, my mom's cool, my dad, you know, everything's cool. So the environment is better for that child too. Yeah, I mean, it is. And, and then the, the beauty, another beauty of co-parenting is that we do have that refresh, take care of you day so that we both genuinely are like, yeah. girl, you know, when, when you see her because you've had a couple of days away. So so it is exciting. Like, yeah. I know daddy's gonna love on me right now and then mommy's gonna fall out. Cause every, every, even if I miss one day, I'm like, I fall out every time. Like my baby, you know? Let me tell you <laughs> my wife and I went to the cabin not too long ago, right? And we left our kids with my, my brother's babysitting. And so we leave, every time I leave them, I'm like, you know, okay, they call me on FaceTime. I'm looking at like videos in my phone and, it, and we, we literally were gone for the weekend, right? But you appreciate the time and you immediately miss him. But here's the kicker. As soon as we got home, we put him in the car to go visit grandma. We were 20 minutes on the highway and I was like, you want to go back to Tennessee? <laughs> so they were in the back seat like going at it. They were doing the siblings. Yes. They were, they were fussing about everything. I was like, you want to go back to Tennessee? Okay. And that's how I looked. Like, I just so wanted was, to hug you, but. Yeah. So it was like, I appreciate the time. I'm yeah. Talking, if you co-parent, just appreciate the time. Please. Absolutely. Because that's where your mama's speaking from. Your mama's speaking from. That was me. Every day, your mom was in the grind. And so she like, you mean you got somebody going to help? That's yeah. right. Let them help. But, it, but, it's, help. but the funny thing is, you have people that won't co-parent, but you understand the importance of a father, because your father wasn't there, but you won't let this man get his child. And it's like, damn, that's effed up on so many levels, because you know the importance of a father, and he or she has a father who wants to be active, but you won't let them be active because you and your feelings about some things. You know what I'm saying? Can I oh yeah, jump in, jump in. Sometimes money is a factor as well. So I have had conversations where, you know, someone is trying to decide what visitation looks like. Mm -hmm. And the decision is, but we're not going to do 50-50 because I need child support, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, that gets, and I, I mean, that's a totally different topic, and I don't want to go too far into that, but I will say that sometimes that is a consideration, and not always for, I mean, for bad reason. I mean, sometimes we do, because you want the child to have a comfortable home in both settings, and if we were used to, you know, having a combined income and having this type of lifestyle, you want to be able to, to keep that up. So... See, and see that, that, see, that one is true, too, because I know... I know people who ran the situation where they said, hey, can I get more time? Because I only get these every other weekend. First thing, like you said, the mom said, no, because you're going to affect my child support. So again, it's like, so we're putting money over 
time with but, their but, parents. But I, but I think, so in my, the, the, what I'm referencing is discussions where we're thinking that the intentions of the time, more time with the child, is not because you really want to spend more time with the child, but it's because you want to give less money. But let me, but let me say this me. then. So, but, why, but why do we have to go into the intentions being negative? We can't find a positive. Maybe he does want to spend time with yeah. the child. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But we just look at, he's just trying to get off on money. If he is, I just, I'm a firm believer in, you're going to get punished some other type of way. You're going to get punished some other type, because you can, you can cheat the system, but you're going you're gonna to get punished some other type of way, because it's going to come to light. Cause, but it's some dads who genuinely like, hey, man, I want more time, because I know I want to do more, I want to come up to the school, but you're making it so difficult for me to be involved, I'm about to say, man, hell with this. Because I can't keep saying, hey, Karen, can I get him, or can I get him, and you saying this, and I'm like, man, you know what, I quit. But, but I mean, but it, it's, it's a natural part of the, the thought process when you're going through that for you to say, what are the intentions? And you can't just say, oh, I hope his intentions are this way. You want a little bit of, you know, you prove to me that you actually want to be with our child or our children. And when you are with them, I don't want to hear that what you're doing is, you know, they're watching TV the whole time. Are you all doing things together? Are you helping with homework? Are you do you know, so, so you want to know that that's a, the situation. And it's not before you say, okay, yeah, he wants to spend all his time here. Let me go ahead. But see, and another thing, even we talk about this money piece too sometimes. Sometimes dads are getting, I'm going to say financially beaten. And it's, uh, you getting so much for child support, you don't have money to do anything. And moms, and that's one of the things too, even when you talk about parenting. I never think when you talk about co-parenting, just because they say, hey, Karen, you can get $100,000 a month. But you know $100,000 a month is going to make the situation that for, the, for your child to be very uncomfortable at dad's house. I don't think you should go after that. You should say, okay, what is doable for me? Yeah. And what can also give a, him or her a great environment when they go to dad's house? Because some of the worst experiences for children are when I go from mom's house where it's everything. Yeah. And then I go to dad's house and we like, dad got a one-bedroom apartment or you got a two-bedroom apartment with a roommate. I don't have my own room, my own space. But dad like, hey, man, I'm paying this. And child support, I can't do this. You know what I'm saying? And that's, and that's a... Yeah. That's a hard one, man. It, That's a hard it's, one. It's definitely a struggle. Um, I think so. For me, I know you know the the thought of revisiting child support to, to get more money, knowing that I very well could, you know, has certainly crossed my mind. But mm -hmm. then I think about what that would do with my relationship with wow. my daughter's father, and I say, is it worth it in the long run? Yes, I know for a fact, you know, th it would be a better situation for me. Right, I know I would, and I, you know, you know you can yes. win. You know I you know win. I would win, you know right? Win. Yeah. But and yeah. I mean, I literally, I mean, I've actually printed off the paperwork and looked at it, and you know, Almost and then said, I then yeah. said, you know, but no, you know, because yeah. I always believe when you talk about things coming back, I believe that when you handle things in a fair situation, you know, things will come to you as well, and so you know, I'm I'm fine. <laughs> so before we spin any further, like, because I'm I'm hearing all of your decision making. Mm -hmm. Who who was giving you guidance? as you were going through this, right? Because mm -hmm. oftentimes that plays a huge role in the decision fact. If you just got the ball of wine and a bunch of bitter girlfriends, and this is no knock on anybody, don't get me. But if everybody is saying, get him, where is the clearness committee? Where is the decision making coming from that says, you know, wait a minute, because you said I had to take a look inside. That has to come from some source of wisdom. Where, did, where was that coming from yeah. going through? So I am now a sharer today. I was not someone who shared. Mm -hmm then and so i kept mm -hmm. a lot inside and did not seek advice much at all i did decide to go to therapy but my therapy sessions were me just venting like crazy and her saying okay time's up like there was no opportunity for her right. to give me any type of and i don't even know if that was a setting for that type of advice anyway um but most of the people who i talked to were my cheerleaders like yeah girl you know like it was it was that type of and i'm like yeah, yeah let me tell you you know and it could have been that that's what I wanted, so that's the type of person that I sought yeah. advice from. Yeah, because oh, yeah, they were revving you up, girl. Yeah. Get, girl, you better get him. Right. Take no. him to the yeah. clinic. You deserve <laughs> this. You deserve yeah. that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But I remember, so, um, so two things. The discussion about um, child support, my brother was involved in that one. Mm. Um, my, it was my brother and his dad. And the two of us, it was the four of us had a discussion. And I, and I walked away. I was like, I know this is not fair. I know he's getting away. With, you know, but I, was, but I said, you know, yeah, whatever. And especially I, I looked at my brother as I saw him as, as you know, the wise counsel that I needed, the mm -hmm. calming uh, source. 
when it came to visitation, it was actually a single girlfriend okay. who had a friend who was recently divorced who okay. said she was have, living her best life when her um, daughter was with <laughs> daddy. <laughs> and I was like, but I don't want to. I mean, I, rem yeah. I remember conversations. I remember yelling at her and, you know, like, how dare you say that? Yeah. I don't want to ever be away from my child. And, you know, I really wanted to say to her, you don't even know and you don't understand, you know. But even though I felt like that during the conversation, I mm -hmm. still would kind of take it in and say, well, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe this is what, but that was, the, that was actually the only, only one person who actually talked to me about that. Everybody yeah. else kind of felt like, yeah, it should be every other weekend. Yeah. You know? <laughs> hey, but it's, like I said, though, that's what we know. When we talk about dad's mm -hmm. visitation, that's what we know. That's the, Absolutely. that's what's out there. Dad gets every other weekend. He pick up on Friday. He drop off on Sunday for school. That's the that's end. It. If he lucky, mm -hmm. he get to pick up at two thirty, so he get a few more hours. <laughs> Most of the time, he just pick up at the house outside Friday evening. Yep. But and this and then the funny thing, some dads love that schedule because it make them feel like I'm a dad, but I'm really a bachelor. I'm, I don't have kids. I can go be free and play. But some dads really take their role as like I want to be dad. I want to be respected in this role. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's it's a it's a slippery slope. I think. Every visitation situation has to be a case by case, I think. And parents really need to sit down and look at what's in the best interest of the child. Again, yeah. not what's in the best interest of me, what's in the best interest of this child. Yeah. Because this child needs both their parents. And I think the better you two work together, the better child you produce. That's why I would tell my kids' mother, like, the better we are, the better they are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if we have issues, that's us. It should never be that they see that me and you got something going on because they're like, okay, hmm. They ain't on the same team. Okay, mm -hmm. I got. I, I see something. But oh, if they see, yeah. okay, hey, if I get in trouble, mama gonna call daddy. Daddy gonna call mama. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. When they see, oh shoot, mama ain't gonna call daddy. Okay, daddy ain't gonna say nothing to mama. Okay, mm -hmm. now I can play this thing. But when mm -hmm. they say you on the on the same page, that helps tremendously. Absolutely. But let's transition into this with co-parenting. I know. What do you do when? Dating, because I know that's one of the things people hit us about, like when you're talking about dating in the co-parenting setting. I know I can only speak for me. When it comes to dating, I'm going to use my children's mother. I never really get into it because I feel like they're in a space to where I trust them to make sound decisions as it relates to my kids. I, I, I do. I try to stay out of it. But for me, I'm very mindful of who I have my kids around. Like we can date for months upon months and you might not meet my kids because I think that's a very private space mm -hmm. so I, I, and I don't allow many people in that space because I'm like hey I don't want this woman here today this she gone tomorrow they like oh somebody new now I don't want that to be a revolving door so I'm very protective about that space and I know even with me I've lost I've had women tell me before oh you ain't bring your kids around me yet no mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that guy. Oh, cause they used the guys. Hey, you want to bait? I know we've been talking for a week. Carrie, can you watch my, my daughter? I know we've been together. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. that ain't me. So they're thinking he doesn't really care about <laughs> yeah, me. That, that he's ain't not me. serious about me. He nah, that know. ain't, but I want to see how it is because even mm -hmm. if I meet a woman and she has kids, I don't want to meet your kids straight out the gate cause mm -hmm. we need to establish what we, how we going right. with this because I don't want to play with them. But that's, that's about enough about me. But what about you guys? Listen, I'm, so I'm I'm let I'm gonna let Carrie go first because I got a unique situation. But I was gonna get into that too because you you've been remarried, yeah. right? Uh huh. And so you had your daughter, and so you've been through dating and marriage while co-parenting. Yes, yes. So, um, so the dating piece, he started dating someone seriously, um, you know, when she was pretty young. And when I found out about it, I asked if I could meet her, and he instantly said no. And I said, well, you know, what if we go to like a coffee shop or something like that? And he said, no. And I said, but this doesn't make me feel comfortable. And what he said was, you should trust me enough to trust that this is a, a situation that she'd be comfortable with. Now, she was too young for me to really get a gauge from her of how this, this felt for her. And you mean, you say you know, she, you mean your daughter, daughter was too young. My daughter was right. too young. Um, so, yeah, he wouldn't let me meet her. Um, but one day he dropped off my daughter and I saw somebody in a car and I thought it was his mom or his brother or something like that. So I was like, oh, so I started walking to the car and I was like, oh, that's who it is. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Dad of a man, so, black woman. And so, <laughs> but I actually, I think that's what she expected was a, whoa, you know, and it was yeah. more of, hi, um, you know, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and so that's how that piece went. You know, fast forward when, I start dating someone seriously. 
um, you know, he says, I want to meet him mm. or, or I want to talk to him. Or, I want to know more about him, whatever it was. And I said, well, he's right here. And then I went over and I said, hey, you mind talking to her dad? They had a conversation and a very long conversation. I instantly, I didn't go to that whole conversation that he and I had where he told me, no, I went to what is the right thing to do in this situation. And it was, I have a mature partner who is also a parent and I know a hand, I know how he feels about this. I don't, I feel comfortable about the two of them having a discussion. Right. So interestingly enough, now his, his current um, relationship, he says to me, hey, just want to let you know, we said that we were going to let um, each other know when there, you know, it was a serious relationship. Yeah. You know, do you want to meet her? So it was complete. It's completely different this time around yeah. versus the time where he said, "No, you can't meet her." But I, it was probably a because of a all that we've gone through and where we are now. But b because he saw how I did it. So how soon was it when, you, when his first he came around with that first serious relationship? How soon was it outside of the divorce? Oh, <laughs> not long at all. So so I'm just I'm just, all the <laughs> reason I'm saying that because in the conversation we talked about a year and a half before you got the visitation. Mm-hmm. So it was probably still in a rough space all yeah, together. It was, he, it didn't, was, it was, he didn't know how you would react. So yeah, it exactly. took me some time to think about that as well. And yeah, I was my behavior was erratic or my emotions yeah. were. I mean, my behavior was pretty you know stable. My yeah. my emotions were. Absolutely. So you know he may have thought I would cry or I would do whatever because yes. So I agree with you. Okay. From his perspective, okay. he may have thought maybe this is the safest thing to do to protect my relationship with this person I'm with is yeah. to not have, we don't know how she, yeah, so you're right. He could have. See, I, see, I always think lead by example, because if it's me, I want to meet the men that are in my daughter's life. Mm-hmm. And I think, of, I'm not going to say a real man, but I think a mature man will come to the forefront like, hey man, I want to meet such and such and such yeah. dad or what have you. Because I want to let this gentleman know, hey man, I'm around your child. Yes. And if you need anything, hey, man, you can call me. I've, I've even shared my phone number. Like, hey, man, here's my phone number. If you need me, just let me know. Mm-hmm. You know, because I know my youngest daughter's situation, I met, I met her mom's boyfriend at the time. And he was a cool dude. And in actuality, the brother ended up being a blessing to me because when he came into the space, he helped out tremendously with the co-parenting relationship. Okay. Because he had been through drama. So he's like, yes. hey, man, I ain't gonna let you do that to him. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, we're gonna do another way of mm-hmm. doing it. Yeah. And I immediately saw a difference when he came into the yeah, picture. Yeah. Because now, okay, she was better on visitation. She yeah. was more giving. It wasn't a lot of this. So he was kind of there like, man, don't do him like that. And I think mm-hmm. that that was a great thing. But it was just, a like I said, we just met and I just wanted to chop it up with him. And I remember he even called me and they said, hey man, um, um, Amari did this. Hey, how do you think I was telling this? I was like, man, you got discipline in your house. And it was shocking to other people because they were like, why you say that? I said, man, that man got discipline in his house. Mm. Because he had to have order. I'm not gonna tell okay. him he can't do this much. Now if he go above and beyond, yeah, yeah. he has to he see me. Yeah, there's a line. Yeah, but he got to do what he has to do because uh-huh. my daughter has to respect the boundaries in his home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. shocking to a lot of people because a lot of times we talk about, yeah. like, hey, don't you say that to my child? Absolutely, that's, my child. that's what yeah. people think. <laughs> that's big of you. Yeah. yeah. He's spending yeah. money on this child too, so he. I'm not gonna say just because he's spending money he has to say so, but mm-hmm. he's a man in her life and he's a man that her mother's taking serious. Mm-hmm. I don't want my daughter to ever be in the space or my children to be in the space to where they're disrespecting your partner, saying, mm-hmm. "Oh, man, you mm-hmm. ain't my daddy or you ain't my mama." That's comment. Right. No. If he say this, and I'm gonna very if well it's something, that way. And if it's something, most of the time, 99 percent of the time, I'm gonna double down on that stamp and get on you too. So yeah. we both gonna be on top of you on mm-hmm. that. One. But. Yeah. It's just being a man to be at that space to where you want to meet other men because you have a lot of brothers. I don't want to meet your dude, man. That's your man. You y'all y'all do y'all thing. Yeah. I don't want nothing to do with it. that. Ain't that ain't that ain't me and ain't never gonna be me. But yeah. but to to just quickly just go ahead, go ahead. To, to in his defense, I do think that it was the place that we were in. Okay. Why he did say no, yeah. Yeah. you know. And to your point about the partner helping with the co-parenting, I think that that, that same first girlfriend did help with that. Because mm-hmm. there would be times where he would say something and he would say, well, you know, she helped me to see it this way. And so, you know, he would bring it into the, the conversation. That's so sometimes right. it can be helpful. But yes, I mean, yeah. in his defense, it probably, again, I, I am not a, you know, a fighter or, a, you know, I'm not any yeah. of those things, yeah, but yeah. I, I was in a very high emotional state. And so, it, you know, that could have very, it probably did. Played way heavily on the decision. They absolutely made a made a huge probably uh, impact on the decision. Mm-hmm. And so the reason I said I'll tell my story next is because we had been talking about this co-parenting topic for some time, right? And I'd be like, you know, yeah, Nick, you you know, you the subject matter expert. And I was talking to my wife, and she was like, you know, you co-parent. Mm-hmm. 
But it's because I'm blessed that the situation is mm-hmm. so good that I don't even look at it the way that people talk about co-parenting. It's almost a stigma around co-parenting that people talk like this uphill battle. This, but I don't look at it like that. And so I just give you the backstory. My wife and I, we, you know, we we met one another, and um, once we decided to be serious, it had been some time, almost a year. Then I got introduced to what I call my oldest daughter. So if you hear me in conversation, I never say my stepdaughter. I say my oldest daughter. Mm-hmm. And that's no knock on her dad. That's just the relationship yes. I view. Yeah, and the way we, I view our relationship, right? Mm-hmm. So I say my oldest daughter, but, I, you know, we got introduced. And long story short, I met her dad. So here's why I tell people all the time. I live in a real-life soap opera, like real-life reality TV show, okay? Yes, sir. Nick, and when Nick, <laughs> Nick heard it, Nick was like, what? Me and my oldest daughter's dad play instruments at church together. He's the organist. I play drums. Okay. I go That's to his house. Level. We kick it in the man cave and watch games. My son just went to Six Flags with, you know, his older sister and her dad on Saturday. Like, it's like brotherhood. How does your wife feel about this? So here's the kicker behind all of this, right? So my my, um, oldest daughter's dad, and it sounds crazy if you don't get the backstory, but my oldest daughter's dad, his father is the pastor. Of his church. And so the training (laughs) and the upbringing is what has helped his his okay. view of manhood. Because I'll be honest, I was probably, I probably grew up in a skewed view of like this fake manhood. Like, yeah, oh, we straight. We don't got to talk. We straight. Mm-hmm. But because of the training, because of what we were introduced to, because of what happened, we came to that place. Wow. And so like right now, we communicate about school events. We communicate mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. cheer practice. We communicate, mm-hmm. hey, bro, you know, um, such and such, you got a game. You know what I mean? got to do this. Okay, cool. I got you. If I call him right now, he can be like, Charles, what's up, bro? And, and that's but right. that's how we do. And so now his brother is also like a brother to me, like the way we roll. And my wife is cool with it. Okay. And he go to kick behind all this. People will never fully understand this. Right. So my wife is close to my, to my oldest, to my daughter's granddad. Cause he's the father she never had. Mm. And so like, they got a ritual, like on Thursdays, they go walking together and they just have these conversations and he's talking. He just give her nuggets and he give her guidance. But his wife has taken me in like a son. <laughs> and, and when I, when I, listen, when I tell you real life reality TV. What is the TV, name of your soap opera? Yeah. Real, it's real life yeah. reality TV. But I call, okay. if I call her, I'm going to call her mama. If I call um, her, I'm going to say, hey, mama. And if, if she needs something at the house, I'm going to come by there and do it. But I give them so much credit for what they introduced in my life in terms of, because like the reason, and this is a quick backstory, I never say this again, but the reason I don't ever say stepdaughter is because my stepfather one time, my middle brother, is Cameron. He told somebody, oh, that's Cameron's brother. And he said it real quickly, but it'll, it'll never fade away. Mm. And so that determines what, you know, when I look at co-parenting, okay, if you're going to come in, like you said, if you're going to come in, not only do you provide, you provide discipline. So my oldest daughter, she know, like, I'm the one, like, I don't want to hear no, I don't want to see tears at home work time. I don't want no slacking mm-hmm. off. But she asked me for AirPods. She 12 and asked me for an Apple Watch and AirPods. And then had the nerve to send me three pictures of Jordans the other day. Because she know I'm a sucker. Wow. I'm a sucker. <laughs> but I just got a high expectation. So I just get that backstory because I never even looked at myself as being in a co-parenting situation. My wife was like, yeah, you, mm. know you, you know you co-parent. But see, that's the beauty of y'all's face, though. Yeah. It's done in such a beautiful manner. And a child benefits. Because Absolutely. Because a child benefits, you're like, y'all got to deal with it. Yeah. I got mm-hmm. a village. I ain't got no drama. Mm-hmm. It's like, we just a village. And I think everything just flows smoother that way. But we have to, but I think too, that requires us to get out of our field. You got to sit your ego down. Yeah, you got your ego got You, you got to sit your ego down. See, co parent doesn't people forget too. It's compromising that. It's going to be some things you yeah. got to say, hey, you know what? Mm-hmm. I got to let that go. Yeah. And, you, and that one thing I've learned during this co parenting journey is somebody got to be the bigger person. And sometimes I felt like it's been me a lot of times, like, man. And okay. you say that. You gotta take this role. You gotta, cause you gotta, you gotta pick and choose your battle. Uh huh. Every battle ain't worth yeah. a battle. Absolutely. Fight. See, yes. Yes. Like, yes. Hey, Stop. People. Oh, she want red shoes. Why she want red shoes? I want other black shoes. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, that's not, that's mm-hmm. not. But check this out though. Here's what, what the way I look at it, right? Cause this is my wife's ex. Let's not act like I was cool out like the gate by all. This is still yeah. my wife's ex. Yeah. So if you got any type of insecurity, you're like, damn, this is my wife's ex. But the reality of what you said earlier is, as long as this child has breath. They got to work together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you might as well just get out the way, bro. Don't be here. Either you're going to be okay with this or you're going to get out the way. And so I had to get over that hurdle. Then I had to sit my ego down and just be like, okay, you know what? 
you got to just chill. Like, what is it, what is it about? The relationship is about what? Providing the best for her. Yeah. And see, and see one thing you said, even when you're talking about ego, ego and also some people, I'm not going to say everybody, but yeah, some people deal with ignorance. They think if you get along with your child's parent, you guys still have an intimate relationship. Mm-hmm. No. We're just at a place where we understand, hey, man, we have a job to do. Mm-hmm. We have we have, this, mm-hmm. we have, we have mm-hmm. a vested interest, and we're trying to get the best on this. We're trying to get the best product we can get. Absolutely. And the best way for us to get the best product is for us to be on the same page. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean we're sleeping yeah. together. Yeah. No. I just know, hey, this is my child's mom. Hey, this is my child's dad. We got to work together yeah. to get the best product. Mm-hmm. As long as you keep, again, Keeping the child at the forefront, everything will always work out fine. Absolutely. But again, bro, I just ooh, that compromise. I'll tell you that compromise. <laughs> <laughs> it is by me, but you said it, you said it. Not everything is worth the argument, you know? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. It, 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 it's not, man. I mean, because you can always find something, man. Mm-hmm. You can always find something. You just like, oh, we had it again. Like, I think me and my children look, we had to get from that point. Cause he like, maybe we go good for about a couple months. Then all of a sudden, it'll be just that Something. one uh-huh. little minor thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boom, he go a full of text, man. That, that mean, okay. okay. Oh, you you like fire, too. Every time you just say, okay. You yeah, just... absolutely. What? That's all you, what? That makes <laughs> me want <laughs> it's, it's like, to. It's like I'm arguing with you for what? Yeah. Because yeah. some things, too, when you're talking about even court, when the court is involved, you're the custodial parent. What am I arguing with you for? You're going to still make the final decision. Mm-hmm. Only thing I've asked for is, I told my child's mother, just please act like my opinion matters. Because hmm. the worst thing you can do is make me feel like I don't give a damn what you say. It ain't going to happen. No. Even if you know, hey, I'm doing A. Please listen to what I got to say. At least listen. It, to entertain my oh, point of view. Okay. I see what you're saying. So, so has it gotten, like, what has been the journey for you? Like, has it, is it a lot easier now than it was before? Is it about the same? Like, what, how's, how's it been? Um. You know, well, it's two two kids, two different situations. I'll start with my oldest. It's um, the journey is still up and down sometimes, okay. and that's like a, a, a up and down battle. But I think it's gotten better as she gets older. And um, we had some talks, and I and I hit her with something. I think not too long ago, just like, hey man, no, it's for a couple of years ago, like about being more involved and wanting to do more. And she was like, man, I never even think about it. And I think to some mom's defense. Sometimes you guys get so caught up in the mom mode, mm-hmm. you just make decisions. You kind of, I'm not gonna say you forget she got a dad, but you're like, hey, I'm making decisions. I gotta make decisions. Yeah, I got mm-hmm. this. But it's mm-hmm. like, damn. And I always tell mom, chat them too, call him and ask him, hey, what do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Even if you already know the answer, just say, oh yeah, you know what? We decided to go with what you said. Mm-hmm. You'll watch how the relationship will change tremendously because now he feel like he's valued as opposed to, mm-hmm. hey, I'm just a chick. He go on money every two weeks. Because that's how some dads feel like all we are is a bank to pay child support. Mm-hmm. We, we're not here to ever give our thoughts or opinions. Our feelings matter too. You know, and I think women have to take that into consideration like he has feelings too. Mm-hmm. Things bother him. Yeah. Why isn't he valued? But I, going back to my sub situation with my youngest daughter, through everything we've been through, we've always had a pretty decent co parenting relationship. Okay. Because one thing I can say, I think she truly understands hey, man. Amara got a kick-ass dad. And I'd be damned if I'm going to keep away from her dad. And I'm like the same thing with her mom. Like, even when we went through certain things, that's her mom. And I always want her to view her mom in a certain light. Because I know with me, if I speak certain negative things, she's going to take some of those things in. Mm-hmm. And that's why I even talk about that four days with some of the fathers. Those four days, the mom say, you know, your dad don't really want to be around you. Technically, it supports. Maybe you don't. Because you he don't see me four days a month. Mm-hmm. But the other days, you and me, so, mm. Maybe that is true. Maybe he don't want me. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So that's why mm-hmm. I say you have to speak light into those negative situations because oh, yeah. it's already negative. He's sending me a limited amount of time. Then his mom is saying, man, your dad really don't want to deal with you or, or this, that, and the third. Now it supports maybe what I'm thinking because I'm going to know this house every other weekend. Mm-hmm. Hmm. He dropped me off on yeah, Sunday. He don't never tell me I can stay a little while. Yeah. yeah. It's like, wow. And then mom, yeah, your daddy, your daddy, sorry, he dead, dead be. Come on, man. We're That's talking we long-term damage, yeah, you know, it, that, that, it that could happen from it that. Does. But see, sometimes I think moms forget, too. And this is what I say, would say to dads, too. Stay true to who and what you are. Because in the long run, the truth will always come to the light. Hmm. And my mother used to always tell us about it. This is key. My mother never talked bad about my father. She said, you'll see some things as you get older. And I hmm. did see some things. Some things were like, okay, I'm still my dad. Something like, hmm. I, I didn't like this, but mm-hmm. she never, ever talked bad mm-hmm. about my dad. 
And that's how I, that's how I roll my kid. Like, I ain't got nothing bad. That's your mom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, talking mom. badly that may make you feel good for a, a short term because you're like, let me get it out, let me tell you. But then, mm-hmm. but but what is it doing for your child or your children? Yeah. I mean, it it, it could be so it could do so much damage by talking badly about the other parent. So it's definitely not worth it. Well, some parents they they won't talk bad because they want like you said again hold themselves up. I'm gonna say I'm in first place. Mm-hmm. You in second place. As long as you never threaten this first place seat, we mm-hmm. cool. So yeah. I'm keep make sure I keep. Hey, I gotta keep my foot on his that's, neck. That's, them egos mm-hmm. or the insecurities. That's, yeah. that's, that's exactly yeah. what they that's exactly what they are. And I got a lot of friends who they ran into those situations. Hmm. They run into those situations where it's like, hey man, every time I try to get a leg up, she's gonna kick me back down. But you know, we and then too with men, man, we have egos too. To come yeah. to the oh, situation, yeah. co-parent the situation oh, too. Yeah. And some of those egos, I'm not, and this is being honest, and since we talk honest about men and women. Men have problems sometimes with the co-parent relationship because we bring our emotions in too. We want them to kick it like women don't want to come with emotions. No, we come with emotions because maybe the judge said we're paying child support. They ain't got nothing to do with that child. Hey, man, you, you, you have to pay the amount, make it happen the best way you can make it happen and still be a good father. You can't allow your emotions to come in too now that when you start being bitter too because men can be bitter. And oh, no. Yeah. We can act like some, some <laughs> right. chicks too for lack of better words. Yeah, you, you didn't have to use that example, but no. <laughs> Come across the table, Nick. Don't get okay. her. We got our first woman on the show, Nick. Don't get All her. All right. Her. Yeah. Hey, man, I, ain't, I, I ain't trying to. But we understand the point, though. We care with our own. We care our own emotional baggage. And I say sometimes it's display. Because we don't know what to do with it. We don't talk about it. We don't go to nobody. Mm-hmm. We don't say, okay, man, this is how I'm feeling. I feel hurt. You know, she won't let me see my kid. We just suck it up and be like, man, and I got to pay child support? Damn that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And I mean, then we talk about child support services, as I go, I would go back to. Only thing they care about is money. They don't set up visitation, legitimation. They don't do that. So how the hell can you not do all this if we talking about child support? This would be a full circle thing. Hey man, dad gonna leave out of visitation. They'll say, hey, you're gonna pay a thousand dollars a month. Oh, when I'm gonna get sent, you need your lawyer to work that mm-hmm. out. Why? Or, or tell about the fact if you got a question, they tell you to call on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you need to call somebody to start talking to them. This is the court, right? This is like but, the mama can go all week to get child support set up. What they tell you, you had to, you had to call you on certain th- days. You got wow. certain days. You can, and it's like, so those things are difficult. And I think when you talk about co parenting, it's like still just being considered and compromised and giving just, just the balance, man. Thank another other person. Yeah. You know, so I think those are just, I don't know, they're just, they're just difficult, man. And so when we talk about co-parenting, there's so many different scenarios, right? How people get into the co-parenting mm-hmm. situation. There's so many factors that play and so many variables that can change that whole thing, the dynamic. But, Kerry, I'm, I'm going to give you this question. If there was one, I guess, bedrock place to start with working towards a good co-parenting relationship, whether it was maybe a change in the relationship between you and your daughter's uh, father or it was something you learned over that journey, What's that bedrock place to start for a good co-parenting relationship? I still go back to what I said earlier of, you know, checking your emotions Mm -hmm. and not putting your child or children in the middle of the Mm -hmm. disagreements, but putting them, as I mentioned before, in the center of the decisions and really asking the question, what is best for the child or for the children? And it's, it's, having to constantly ask that question because things, you know, arise um, throughout the, the process. And even if you were in, a, in, in the same home um, and still in a relationship, you still see things differently. We all, you know, we, yeah. we, we have different ways that we parent, right? So it's already difficult enough, the whole parenting piece of yeah. how do we do this? Then you put the two separate households in it. And as you mentioned earlier, some things are just not worth the fight. It's yeah. just not, and, 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 and it's so, it's, it's like a weight lifted off when you're not going through that anymore. I mean, I am in a place where, you know, I wish him the best and I love that they have fun together and I, you know, but, but again, it was a journey. And yeah. so I think the thing is it, for people who are not in that space and can't see themselves being in that space, it's just work at it. Mm-hmm. work at it seek wise counsel you mentioned who you're getting advice from yeah. seek wise counsel yeah. you don't always need that person who's going to rev you up yeah. you know and and you you have to really think about the people who are who are looking at the in- situation from all perspectives and are going to give you sound advice right um i think that that's extremely important <laughs> is who, who you're talking to <laughs> but it's also important to talk to vent to write it down to do things that, that keep you in a, in a calmer space right so that you can be a better parent. And see, even when you talk about relationships, going to that piece about two different houses, I, I sell this to my daughters all the time. 
the beauty of this co-parenting space is when you look at it originally you have two but if everything goes right you gain four mm -hmm. so it's really a win because now hey if dad's over here dad gets married hey that's another that's a bonus mom you mm -hmm. get. your mom get married hey mm -hmm. that's a bonus dad you get so now you're gaining more parents and more people to love you so my kids look at it like oh man this is a win like okay. yeah you know, so I think it's all about, too, how we spend it, too. Mm -hmm. Because I try to mm -hmm. spend it like it's, it's, it's a positive. Because I know me and your mom, we're, pro we're probably not going to get back to that space. Mm -hmm. But we can stay in a great co-parenting space to where you really can win right. within this situation. I, see, for me, I think about it from the standpoint of, uh, again, I guess it's my situation. I think about first making a real self-awareness assessment, right? Um Am I prepared, when we talk about building this co-parenting situation, am I prepared to do everything that I need to do to sacrifice for this child is not mm -hmm. mine? And the reason I say that is because I heard so many people say, um, oh, that child, she don't like me. He don't like me. You know what I mean? And that's what's, that's what's rocking the relationship. That's why we can't get to a, a, a congruent place for co-parenting. And I think about it like, it ain't the kid's responsibility. It was my, it's my job to do everything possible to build that relationship. And so when I started thinking about what people need to do or what I believe a good advice would be, am I doing everything I can to make sure this is going in a good direction? Am I similar to your same point, but am I making this with good intentions? I guess that's mm -hmm. what I would say. Am I making this decision with good intentions? Is this the best intention for the child or am I doing this because I want to look good? Yeah. And when I say am I look good, am I trying to be super dad because I want to look good to the person I'm dating or super mom to the person I'm dating? Mm -hmm. Or do I really want to be value add to this child? And I think once you start with good intentions, things tend to just, they kind of line up. Yeah. They tend to fall in place. And, and you, you mentioned the don't like me piece yeah. for the, you know, a, a bonus child. Like yeah, absolutely. You mentioned that language. Um, it could be just, I wonder how my mom will feel. I wonder how my dad will feel. The loyalty. Like, how how yeah. long, you know, if, if I get too close. Yeah. So it's that, that, that conflict, and you have to consider that as well. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. that's, a, that's a tough place for a kid to be in. Absolutely. <laughs> but we put them Absolutely. in that spot. We put them in those spots. <laughs> because I think if the kid is happy again, we should be good. Mm -hmm. If he or she is happy, we should be good. But we again, we're not checking our egos at the door. My ego won't allow me not to be number one. Mm -hmm. I got to be yeah. number one. Yeah. Hold on, somebody. It's hard. Home. It's hard. Oh, no. They got to go. But I'm, it's they hard. got to go. Listen, in, that, in the same breath of that, though, how many times people just don't ask the kid? How many times we assume that the child is uncomfortable about something and we don't just sit them down and talk about it? Because, like, for me, I thought about it like, I want to be I want to be bonus dad. I'm doing everything. Why you don't feel it? But then I mm -hmm. thought about it, you know. I went to her. We, we, when she got to be like, it was probably, you know, eight, nine, and she's like, okay, you know, you don't, you don't have to call me. I'm cool with that. You don't have to call me dad. This is what our relationship is. So our relationship became uh, more positive affirmations. It became um, like her, in my phone, her number. She has a phone that I got bacon and shrimp in, in front of her name, like in the emojis, because that's what she liked. And so that's what our relationship is defined around. It became those little things. But it became me trying to make sure I made it clear. I'm not, I'm not replacing a spot. Mm -hmm. Like your dad is there. Even when, sometimes even in the discipline piece when they come in, I include everybody who's in her like decision maker corner. How you think grandma and grandpa are gonna feel about this? How you think dad gonna feel about this when this report card mm -hmm. coming about? Because mm -hmm. I'm letting you know this, I stand firm on how I believe about it, but I'm letting you know I'm wrapping back your, your support system so that she understands I'm not trying to take somebody's place. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be value add, whatever I can do. And, and, and but I say that because we assume the kids feel a certain way. We assume that they feel this, but that loyalty piece, yeah. just ask them. Yes. I ain't trying to disrespect mama. I don't wanna disrespect dad. I just wanna, you wanna play my part. I want to play my part. And, kid, and kids do, I think, they're like I say again, they think they're trying to find their way in the midst of this maze, mm -hmm. too. And as yeah. adults mm -hmm. make this maze as seamless as possible, it's easier for them because they know how to navigate through mm -hmm. it. Where, like you say, I ain't got to be fake with you to be real, do not hurt this person. No, I can just be me mm -hmm. and let adults work it out. But again, still keep going back to it. Adults have to get out of their own yeah. way. You know, we have to get out of our own way and see the child as this is the piece that keeps us together because I can joke my youngest child is definitely the glue in the in the two family. Okay. She want her family together 24-7. Like, yeah. like my mom was just here a couple days ago. So she said, Dad, I gotta spend four days with my grandma. And she was at Nana's house weekend, which is my which is her other grandmother. Mm -hmm. So she said, um, man, I only get to spend three days with my nana. She said, Man, I wish I had eight days in this week because I want to give my nana four <laughs> and my mama four mm -hmm. and my grandma four. But she just loves her family. And That's I amazing. always post like I promise you, if it was a picture of a family, that'd be her in that picture because yeah. she wants her family. Wow. Like, my daughter told me, hey, man, 
I wish that daddy, we stay right here and my mama can stay next door and then my nana can stay next door and my grandma can stay right there so yeah. I can just go down the street to all my family. Like she loved her family. Well, at least you know she ain't going to put you in the home. She's going to put all y'all in the, in, in the house on the same block. That's why you got them girls, man. The girls yeah. ain't going to oh, let that That's yeah. yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, you got too much going you on. You all right? <laughs> but, but you really just hit it to my point. This is going to be kind of my like wrap up point. Right? And, all, and being of faith, being believers, right? I firmly believe everything happens according to what we need mm -hmm. and not what we want to happen. Because how many of those things would you have done without the freedom of co-parenting? In, in such that, in that, in that manner of time, yeah. you know, PhD, career change, mm -hmm. in the hustle and bustle of parenting, sometimes we lose an entire year. Mm -hmm. We say, damn, mm -hmm. it's a birthday already. It's Christmas. Yeah. You know what I mean? We lose so much time. So then, in that opportunity, same with, same with your daughter, to be the glue. It can't be, y'all can't have a bad relationship because she's not going to allow bad relationships. Mm -hmm. Everybody got to be talking. Everybody got to be on this one accord. Everybody got to, everybody got to be on the same phase. I look at my co-parenting space as forcing me to deal with the things that I thought about, I guess maybe my stepfather, different relationships in my life growing up. It gave me an opportunity to view what I, to see what I thought about it, but it also gave me an opportunity to be extremely a value add. Mm -hmm. What I experienced as a child, I could never do to her. So it forces me to think about it differently. So just how many things you look back on it, if, if there was anything along the journey, Kerry, would you do anything differently? Um, I think of who I am mm -hmm. um, is because of all of those experiences and who my daughter is, is because we did not put that in her face <laughs> okay. that we had those struggles. And so I can't say that I would do anything differently because I've learned so much from it and now I'm in a place where I just want to share, you know, what I've yeah. learned. So no, I, I can't think of anything I would do differently. I'm, I'm a firm believer as you are that things happen the way they're supposed to happen. Absolutely. And like you mentioned, you know, those lessons help you to help others along the way. So. Nick, would you, I don't, what would you do I anything do? differently? I don't, I don't think there's a lot I would do differently. Um, I think I would probably, the older me would probably tell the younger me again, pick and choose your balance, you know what I'm saying, with this co-parenting thing. Because I think when I was younger, I just was at a firecracker because I want to do when we were just dealing with cord and those issues, so a lot of friction, but just learning how to pick my battle. Mm -hmm. And I think the older I've gotten, picking my battles and just constantly when we had this conversation, reinforcing certain things. Mm -hmm. And then even having difficult conversations in a better manner. Because I think sometimes you express some of your true feelings in frustration and that's and they're not being heard at that moment. To where if we're in a positive state, maybe on the meetup, I can say, Hey, I want to talk to you about, about school. And then we can have a conversation and you're more, I'm gonna say, more likely to listen to me and take what I have serious as opposed to in the midst of that text message, you just trying to find a way to curse me back out. Yeah. So you're missing the point of me yeah. maybe saying something about school. So it's like finding ways to just deliver the message in better setting. But then also again kind of just picking and choosing the battle. Right. But um but I say the second go around I think I got it a little better. But um it's cause because we do we we just communicate a lot better as it relates to co parenting. But I'm in a good space with it now. I think it continues to get better and I often say this about co parenting. It's like it works. It's a working document. Yeah. Yeah. It's forever That's right. yeah. If you get caught up in the saying this is one way, it ain't gonna work. Yeah. Something's gonna change and you have mm -hmm. to be okay with change. You know, you mm -hmm. have to be okay with change and just always, again, keep the child in the forefront. Yeah, I mean, and to what you just said, I think that's a perfect way to, to wrap the episode. That quote that Dr. Kerry gave us, I, I won't quote it word for word, but you gave it to us twice. You'll close us out with it. Um, sure. So, do not keep your child in the middle of the disagreements, mm -hmm. but keep your child in the center of your decisions. Absolutely. What a way to close the episode. This has been another episode of the Fern Podcast. I'm Charles. Nick. Carrie. Absolutely. Until next time. We out. I'm Nick Clark. This is the Ferns Podcast.